Hello and welcome to the first ever animation exchange on Twitch. Uh, it's a day-long animation event with lots of talks from a lot of industry veterans. Today, the first thing we're doing is a live Q&A panel with this wonderful panel right here. And we're going to go down the line and do some introductions starting with... Hey guys, um, my name is Julius Sadul. I'm the CEO and co-founder of uh, Steamroll Studios. I am also an animator, wannabe, uh, worked on a lot of movies and games. Best movie I've ever worked on was Garfield 2, A Tale of Two Kitties. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm Matt Baim. I'm an animator at Blizzard Entertainment on Overwatch. Um, I'm just excited to be here, you guys. Hi, I'm Mariel. I am lead animator and art director at Lab Zero Games. We made Skullgirls, and now we're making Indivisible. I'm a professional fan of Mariel's work. Yeah. My name is Gwen, and I'm a technical animator. I've been an animator for 10 years now. Uh, I founded a studio in Boston with several other folks called the Molasses Flood. And uh, we're, we launched our first title, The Flame and the Flood, one year ago as Ooh. of yesterday. Yeah. yeah. And you're the, up for like multiple awards? That is true. Yeah. I'm up for two IGF awards tomorrow yeah. at the IGF, which is pretty sweet. And hi, I'm Tim. I'm the animation director at First Strike Games. Uh, I've made over a dozen games, and I've probably been on games that have been canceled over a dozen times. So that's why. What? Use the handheld mic. I have to use the handheld mic? Yeah. Can no one hear me? Do I have to do it all over again? All right. Oh, oh Tim. Tim. This guy's running this thing. Am I? I don't. Hi, mom. <laughs> I, which do I use? I'm gonna just. I'm just gonna mute the the lavalier and I'm gonna use this. Okay. Yeah. They All right. They don't tell you that audio is 10% of animation quality. Oh, am, am I animating really bad right now then? <laughs> All right. So we uh we're gonna get started because we're already behind. Uh, we can thank somebody for that. I probably shouldn't say who. And uh, we're going to kind of jump into it. We did a couple of online Twitter polls, uh, because Twitter's only online, so I don't know why I said online Twitter polls. Uh, and we came up with a bunch of questions to ask. And the first question, the most popular question, was, uh, what is the most important principle of animation as it relates to games for each of the panel members? Who wants to go first, Julio? Gwen. Gwen. Oh, I, said, oh. you said your name. I said Gwen. Well, uh, the principles of animation. I don't remember that book. I think the, um, yeah, I do. So I think the most important thing when you're starting a character, it's when you start a character, right? Or for game animation? For game animation, for game animation I think the figuring out your key pose, especially like your key idle pose. Um, when I start, anytime I, I start thinking about how I want to animate a character, I usually figure out um, several important poses for them. So it'll definitely be their idle pose. Um, I'll figure out what pose I want for maybe their primary attack. I'll, I'll think of a couple of hero poses that I think define them. So for Scout, this is a little unusual, but one of the poses I used for her was actually reaching into her bag to, uh, to, to every time you pick up an item, you put, some, you put it in your bag. That was actually a, one of the, a hero pose in a way for her. Um, and I just make sure all of those, those poses look like they'll work well together. So I would say posing would be the principle of animation that is uh, most important for game animation for me. Um, I guess I'm going out. Um, I would say timing, I guess just because it's, it's kind of everything in a game. Where do, where do I look? Do I look at the camera? I'm going to look at you. <laughs> um, okay. okay, so I would, say, I would say it's timing, just because before you even start to animate or have any art or music or anything, you're going to want to have the core of your gameplay down. Um, so I, I would say that you know once you have your gameplay figured out, that kind of determines your timing, which is it then going to determine what your animation is going to be. Um, so I think that's it for me. Oh, wanna, am I good on this mic? I don't know. All right. All right. Do we just roll through? We good? Uh, yeah, we're good. Is he live? <laughs> All right. Uh, I think normally I would say appeal because. Oh, oh, I stole Jaleel's. That's okay. We're all on this mic. I, I'm just wearing this for show. Um, yeah, I would say normally appeal because appeals, not only is it a catch-all, everything sort of builds up to it, but you can have appeal without some of the other principles. Um, and, I mean, that's clear in TV animation, right? Yeah. Like, I mean, I love uh, Wander Over Yonder's animation and, or Ren and Stimpy, and they just hit cool poses and snap to them. But for game animation, I think you might have changed my mind. It might be posing and timing. 
especially first person. I mean, first person, you have that locked off camera, and if you don't have a great silhouette in your pose, it's gonna look like garbage. So, Jalil, you can probably expand on uh, appeal. Thanks, bud. <laughs> gonna be original here. So, uh, my life, I do this. Huh? Anybody? Because I got. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna say appeal. Thanks. So glad I went. Um, I, I'm gonna just echo what he said, but uh, I think if it was just animation, I would say appeal is because when, especially as a professional animator, when you look at something, you don't you don't go, hey, the arc is wrong or the spacing is wrong or the timing is wrong. You just ask yourself, does it look good or, it, or does it look bad? And usually later you go investigate. You know, uh, your director is not gonna look at it and be like, hey, your arc is wrong. The director will be like, something is off. It doesn't look right, and that's appeal. So you know, then you have to go investigate what it is. So appeal is really important when it comes to just animation. I think we all agree to that. But when it comes to game, yep, he said it already. I would say pose and timing uh, is probably, because in game especially, uh, animation goes out the window. It's, it's basically the game designers that will tell you exactly what needs to be done when. You just have to struggle to make sure that it works and it looks appealing within the time that you're given. So I would say appeal is still there, but timing is absolutely more important. Hi, before I go, I was supposed to remind you, uh, if you have questions to ask, use the at Twitch office account, and they will see it in the chat, and then they will throw things at me. So you guys stole all my answers, so I'm going to make one up. And I'm actually going to steal, no, I'm going to steal it from someone else who told me about this one last night. Uh, staging, I think, is a really important principle for animation in games. Uh, in first person, we have a, the unmute the belt pack if you don't want to <laughs> pass the, I, can you all hear me now? Yeah. I mean, they're doing this to me on purpose every time I talk. Okay, so it's, am I good? Can the chat hear me? Here, chat, can you say if you can hear Tim right now? Tim, say things. Hi, how are you guys doing? I am just talking. Jake, what's the chat say? Oh, you got any now let's go to Jake. Yeah. The chat. Oh, okay. okay. And wait, no, how much time do you think wait, we should no, spend on no, that's, that's not. No, wait, wait. We are, we're trying to make sure that I can. Can the chat her. hear him right now? Uh, it's delayed. Uh, no, no. Oh. Sorry, we're a bunch of animators, not very right, tech hi. savvy. <laughs> we're back. Hi. So as I was saying, I stole this answer from somebody else. Uh, staging, I think, is really important. In first person, we do have a locked camera, and that's great. But in third person, you don't. And so you have to uh, figure out how your animations are going to read on a camera that the player can control. And uh, one of the things that uh, I think is really important is for the animator to be involved in the camera of the game itself so that you know, one, how close or how far away your character is going to be, and two, how those silhouettes are going to read. And the staging of the camera, no matter what the player can do with it, is super important in that, so that you can like communicate whatever it is that you want the player to feel that your character is doing or feeling at that moment. I think. Did I do good? You did you were good. awesome. You did good, Tim. I stole that from him, the guy in the loud shirt over there. <laughs> and I, my, all right. So uh, I think we had a question from the chat. So let's go to that one. All right, who wants to take this one? Sure. Jaleel's taking um, it. I gotta think about it. So take your time to, yeah, take Slow. your time. <laughs> it's you now. Timing. Oh. Are you good? Oh. I got it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so um, I would say, I think I spent a lot of time on, uh, on, uh, on polish, um, but most of the work is done during your blocking. I think blocking and planning is probably the time where you get, you are creative and you can't put music on. You can't be watching YouTube. You have to just be focusing on that part. Because oh, sorry. Uh, they, this mic's not working. They didn't hear the question. So could you oh, can I repeat the question? Uh, the question was, how much time do we spend on a specific part of animation, right? On every specific part of animation. So blocking, animation, polish. Um, mine would probably be polish, but I would say why. Uh, the first part uh, is blocking, and usually that's where I spend most of my creative time is I focus and I make sure I make the right choices. Uh, making the right choice is incredibly important. And then when I go into the spline part of the animation is when I actually put music on or watch something in the background because it's automated at that point. You just want all the arcs and stuff to be good. When you get into polish, 
that's, you get most of your animation done, the 95% of the animation is done really fast, but the last 5% to get it really good and polished is where I spend a lot of time, and then I don't, I can't have music anymore because you go back into being creative, into pushing your arcs and exaggerating your shapes. That's probably, is that good? Yeah, sure. yeah awesome. Good one. We don't have to answer every question all of us either, so if I you can, guys agree with another answer. Uh, I think for me, actually, keying is the quicker part, um, because the way we work is that we, we work off of existing concepts for pretty much every move that we animate. Um, so when we already have the concept, it's just like blowing up that concept, redrawing it to the model, and then we kind of just already have our keys done. and that actually goes really quick. So for me, it's actually more the in-betweens to figure out like how many I need to add. Um, for us, our timing isn't consistent. So just the number of in-betweens kind of just varies on whatever looks good. So that's actually what takes a lot of my time to figure mm -hmm. out. Um, and then polish, polish takes forever. That's, yeah. that's it. <laughs> yeah, I, polish definitely takes a long time, but I definitely spend a lot more time in the beginning just throwing in rough stuff into engine just to let the designers play with it and to play with it myself just to see how it's feeling. Um, so there's a lot of time spent in that really rough prototype phase, uh, just feeling things out. And then from there, you can lock things down and then spend a good amount of time in the polish phase. So I think actually the most fascinating part about these answers, most people won't uh, won't even uh, realize because you work entirely in 2D. Yeah. Uh, Matt works entirely in gameplay animation. And Jaleel, you do a lot of like, uh, like you do everything. You don't even right? know what I do. I don't know yeah. who you, I don't know who he is. In. He's uh. actually homeless. Like he just wandered in here. No, but. After Garfield 2, I just, there was nothing else I, I should be no. doing. Jaleel tends beat. to do, um, I mean, I'm, I know you do gameplay animations too, but you, you do tend to do like a lot more cinematic work yep. and you have a background in, in like film and stuff. Yep. And so that's why to me it was really interesting that you had kind of slightly different answers. Yeah. I'll say I'm like, my last game was an indie developer and we did not have time for polish. And I'm kind of embarrassed. It like, it was like, I mean, I hit that point where like I did, there was a point where I animated a character in two days for like an NPC. It had, it was like an idol. Basically, I had time to make an idol, and it was literally just like poses, and uh, like tweak the curves a little. And there just wasn't time for polish, which is a reality. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't know where you guys are finding all this time for polish, but <laughs> I make games, man. Uh, I for me, it's uh, I, I would say I spend about 50% of time in planning and blocking, and uh, and that's like getting it to the point where I can get it in game, but then I spend, uh, the most more time I spend is on my breakdowns. It's the, I know what my key beats and my key poses are on my character, but then uh, in order for it to not come back as too stiff from somebody, uh, I will spend time on where's the best place to put like an even number of block in, or breakdowns, so that I can get kind of like, you know, a little bit of like overshoot or a little bit of lag on something or a little bit of squash and stretch during those breakdowns, so that it kind of gives the feel of what I want that character to have. Uh, and then, po I mean, polish is great, and I'm gonna come work with you guys because I want polish too. I mean, no wait, we do polish at my studio. We just, I'm in control of that because I'm the animation director, come work for me. We need another question, quick. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he's he's drowning smile. over here. Oh God. <laughs> Do we, all right, so the question is from Splinter88. Uh, do we have any piece of advice or tip that we got from someone that immediately made us work better? Yeah. I'm giving it to you. I have to think on that. Yeah, I think I got one. Oh, um, here. Yeah, when I was in college, I think, I think, I think I'm okay. I think Maybe I don't good. need that. Um, yeah, when I was in college, Mike will remember that. Uh, we had a, a guy from Pixar come over, and you know, when you're in college, you just think you're the best in the world. And uh, he looked at my work and he said, yeah, you've, you've got potential. I'm, I'm about to graduate. I don't need to have potential. I need to be ready. <laughs> um, and that, you know, I took that to heart and I said, wow, this is crazy. So I'm not ready. And I needed a visa to stay in the country. Oh, my, I'm out. I'm back, back to Africa. Uh, so, so yeah, that made me work really, really hard because he said, you know, uh, someday maybe I'll get it. Maybe. 
So I had mm. to really sit down and go, what's wrong with what I'm doing? And I realized that I was looking at where I was in college and not competing against the, you know, around the world. And he told me, he said, look at your work, compete against movies. If you want to work at Pixar or Disney or DreamWorks, compare yourself to that. Don't compare yourself to people that are sitting around you at, 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 at school. So that was like, oh wow, that's right. So then I started studying films more and looking at films and going, what is wrong with what I'm doing? And how do I get better and how do I get to work on films? That's, that's a good one. Yeah. Again. The, uh, I'll say the single. So I started out as a rigger. I spent a great deal of time in my, earlier in my career doing rigging stuff. And I remember when I uh, started animating at first, there was a, the lead animator said something that like haunts me to this day where I worked really hard on this animation and like I showed it to him and he goes, wow, that's really good. I can't wait to see it when it's done. <laughs> like, just dead hand. Like, like, I was like, oh, yeah. And I just got back to work and that was when I realized like, oh, I'm not done yet. It, it, it's, it's the stupidest thing. Like, it's, it sounds so ridiculous, but that was, it was just like the idea that, oh, you're just not there. Like, sometimes you just need somebody to make you look at your work again. I have one, but I guess it's a little different. Just just in regards to like game animation. Um, just like, because I, I was trained in essentially like film or TV animation. Um, but then, you know, I started working on games and I think someone had told me early on to remember that I am animating for a game and to think about how my animation is going to play in the game where the, the specific example um, he, he used was that I was animating an enemy on a Batman game, like way early on. Like I think I, I didn't even end up really doing it, it was just a test. Um, and the lead animator told me, you know, that you have to have like a big anticipation in this attack he's doing before he punches so the player has the time to realize that they have to react. And, and that really hit me like, oh, I have to be considering what the game is doing with my animation. I have to remember what the player is supposed to be doing. Like, what's the purpose of this animation other than to just look like a cool punch? Um, so cool. that was something. Are we all passing? We all passing? Yeah. Actually, I'm going to go really small and sp specific with something. Um, and this probably, I think the, the takeaway from what I'm about to say is uh, collaborating with your whole team and listening to anybody can give feedback. Um, there was one producer on Bioshock Infinite who looked at one of my weapons that I was animating, and he's like, that's neat. Have you, have you seen the way guns do this, like, rocking motion? I was like, huh? And I actually went and seeked out that specific instance in my reference in other games and stuff, and it's, it's very small, very specific. And I was like, okay, holy shit, he's right. Oh, oh wait, first thing's okay. You can, can do it. it. Uh, not ready to be for everybody. Sorry. Um, it's a very specific instance, and it came from somebody I wasn't expecting, and, but he was right. And so I, was, I started looking at that more in, in the motion of how a weapon, I don't know, how are you gonna get kickback from this explosion of gases that are coming out of the front of a gun, and how it, your shoulder and stuff is gonna react to that. And uh, that really opened up my eyes. I'm, okay, I'm gonna put a caveat on that. Is, uh, so listen to everybody but remember you're the one doing it and that you can't take everybody's feedback and try to force it in and think that that feedback is right. You gotta trust your gut on things and trust your expertise, but still, listen to your team. I keep going last, I keep going last on these. I'm gonna try to not screw this one up. Stop looking at me. Um, I, for me, it, uh, it was go the fuck home. Like, get, just get away. If you are having trouble with an animation uh, it, and this isn't like a, a commentary on working overtime or anything like that. It's like there, you could be there at 10 in the morning and you could be trying to find something and trying to redo and constantly trying to polish a turd, really. And you just need to walk away. Go work on something else. Just go get a cup of coffee. Uh, delete the entire thing and delete all of the files and start over. Uh, and that was when I finally like got to that point where I was okay with just throwing away my work because it was bad and I could recognize that it was bad. Then. I started getting a lot better because I could recognize, oh, this is going, this is going way off the rails. I need to like just throw this thing away and rethink the entire thing, and I just put it aside, move on to the next motion. The great thing in games is that we've got to make like 50, 100 animations per character. You have something else yeah. to move on yeah. to. Like unless you're stuck on like that hero pose, that idle pose, 
you don't want to work on the, the hit reactions. Maybe you don't want to work on the, the crouch run. But move on to the crouch run if you can't figure out a good punch. I mean, it'll get your head in a different space, and maybe you'll come back to that punch and, like, well, you'll beat the shit out of it. So yeah, yeah. it's it's you know to elaborate on that, I think what your, your point there is also to move away from your animation, look at it from a distance. It's just like a painting. Artists would do that. They would paint. They're too close to it. They move back and they look at it from a distance. Same with animation. Move away from it. Take a look at it. Have someone else take a look at it. Flip your animation. Mirror it. Look at it in every angle you can because every time you see it from a different angle or after a break, you see new things. You see problems. It really helps you to work and, and fix your animation. All right. I think we have about five minutes left. Can I get a Can I get a count on our time? Five minutes. We have five minutes left. So. Uh, do we have, we can do one more, let's do one more quick question from the chat if we've got it, and then we're going to kind of wrap up with one thing that I want to ask everybody. Question? Yeah, we have any? How do you guys deal with burnout? <laughs> oh, that's a good, how do you guys deal with burnout? Uh, do we want to, do we, we, I mean, we could take the whole five minutes with this, sure. probably, so we can, we, yeah, let's do that, all right. Um, hey, I just want to say, uh, I, don't yeah. I don't know, I'll just take it just in case. I just want to say hi to the guys at Steamroller. Um, be good and go back to work now. Um, so uh, burnout, I've been burned out twice. Um, and the first time was uh, terrible because I uh, just lost my dad at the time. And nobody cries, fine. He's dead already, so it's all good. Um, <laughs> everyone is shaking. <laughs> it's OK, it's OK. It's my dad, not your dad. So. Um, so yeah, it was it was a terrible time because uh, I was in the middle of a project. It was a three-year project, and um, and uh, so I the best way was I was open about it and went to my production manager and I said, this project is uh, you know uh, killing me right now, so I need to move on. So so they were nice about it because they realized what I was going through, so they moved me on to a different project, uh, and that really helped out because I moved away from the project and saw something with different light. And then when I came back to the project, it felt uh, it was better. You know, I just came back and I felt refreshed because I had a break for, on a different project. So I never left animation. I was just on a different project with different expectations. Um, the second time was because, uh, you know, it was a difficult supervisor I was working with. So uh, that really burned me out because the person didn't allow me to grow. So it was way more difficult. And the way I dealt with it was uh, just to tell him how things were going. Communicating with uh, the person you're work with, working with is really important. Telling them that you're going through a tough time, you know, opening up to them makes them realize, okay, maybe I need to slow down on something and, or make things work better. So that was the two ways I, will, I was able to do it. Okay. You want to go? You, wanna you go always last? say you don't want to go last. Oh, fine, I'll go now. Uh, <laughs> Um, for me, it's, it was, I mean, it's actually funny. I gave a, a five-minute talk yesterday kind of going over this. Um, but it, it ultimately came down to uh, when I get burned out, I, I walk away. I go, I just, like, and it kind of extends on, like, when I'm stuck on an animation. I just, you extend it to your, to your job. You take a vacation. Uh, if you have, like, a lot of us have, you know, like, two-week vacation plans. Like, some of us have unlimited PTO. Uh, use it. Take advantage of it. Go. Like, take long weekends. Uh, and go do something that's not animation. Go like go for a, a like a hike in nature. Go like work out somewhere. Go uh, to the movies. Go like just hang out at a coffee shop and people watch. Just do anything that's not animation and try and just kind of remember the. This is a passion for us. This is also a career for us, and it's a way that we are able to pay rent, put food on the table, support our families, or you know ourselves. Um, and we do it because we love it. But it's not. It's not the only thing that we do. We don't do it just to do it. We do it so that we can have our lives outside of work. And uh, I'm going to pull the old cliche. What did, uh, what, who's, who said, oh, God, oh, God, no. Who said it? You, you, uh, you, can't, you cannot uh, create the illusion of life if you don't have one. And uh, Brad Bird said that. And I think that's like really important Who's like that? for you. Brad, Brad Bird, I think he did um, the Mission Impossible movies. Yeah. Oh, cool. All of them. Yeah, it's cool. I guy. think, yeah. Good movies. And so I think, you know, I, I, think, uh, I think that's, you know, how I deal with it, just getting away and, and just remembering why I do it outside of what I'm actually doing. Yeah, I don't know. For me, the hardest times are I don't realize I'm burning out until it's way too late. And I think uh, it's pretty normal when you're. Um, 
anything you do, but even as an animator, okay. there's times when you have to remind yourself that you enjoy doing this because uh, you do it. Okay, each it other this is then, something you okay, love, cool. and you start editing awesome. because you love it, and then you do it every day, and then you crunch, and you're doing it a lot of hours every day, and um, you have to remind yourself. Okay. There's days and when you're like, oh, I hate this. And you're like, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. I love it. And you force yourself to do it, and you wrap back around, and you start liking it again, and that's normal. But you do eventually yeah, reach a point where you're just burnt. And uh, I generally have difficulty distinguishing between the two sometimes. And when you hit, like, when I burn out, I need, like, a month. Like, I gotta vanish. I gotta, usually what I end up doing is working on something else entirely. Something that's not animation. But, yeah, like, we all have other hobbies. Um, but sometimes it'll be a different Jeremy hobby that's gaming related or, or some other thing. Uh, frequently, it's something that is not in front of a computer. Um, I generally find uh, if I'm burnt out, being in front of a computer at all is probably not the best idea. Uh, I, I have no other thoughts on that, really. Uh, yeah, I mean, just to kind of piggyback off that, I, I feel like I go through, like, mini burnouts, like, every couple of months, just, just because we have a lot of work to do. Um, and, yeah, just reminding myself why I'm here at all. Like, I was... I was crunching just before coming here. I was like, oh God, you know, there's, there's so much work, you know, it's unending and, and it's terrible. But now I'm here and I'm with everyone. It's like, oh yeah, everyone is super passionate. Everyone is making cool shit. I wanna make cool shit too. I'm gonna go back and work and then burn out again. But um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's really important to remember why you do it at all, even though it is a lot of work and it's hard. I and almost switch these. I don't know microphones how to make the work side. less, but. <laughs> Uh, everything they said, but uh, just to add one more thing, um, I usually fall back on the support of my wife and my friends. So we tend to have, we have this great community that I of friends that w I'll just go and hang out with them, or I'll just sit with my wife and she'll be like, "You're dude, you're freaking the fuck, uh, you're freaking out, <laughs> chill." Said it, it's okay. Yeah, <laughs> they said no cursing or a little bit, and I'm the one doing it, of course. Um, but. One, so my wife was always the first one to recognize it because I'm an internal person. I, will, I don't share what's happening to me, but she knows me. She's been with me for a while. So she'll be like, all right, no, just don't, don't touch your computer. Come here and let's, let's just chill out and talk about anything. She's also an artist, so we'll talk about her art. Um, so I guess to add on to the walk away thing and do other things thing is uh, fall back on the support of people you love, friends, stuff like that. My wife goes, uh, work and uh, make me money. <laughs> oh. I love you, honey. <laughs> oh, yeah, I beat you all. I won. <laughs> She's not watching, though. Hi, Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> Ian's not watching either. I, 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 are you watching? That'd be I weird. Hi, Jess. I hope you're making delicious food right now, and I can't wait to come home and eat some delicious food. <laughs> and uh, I think we're about out of time. Um, I wanted to ask everybody, like, one piece of advice that they would give uh, their past selves if they were starting out. So let's do a lightning round really quick, even though we're running out of time, because I don't care. Um, yeah, that's the the one piece of advice that you would give yourself, or, you know, like, people who are getting into this. Um, I got one. And Matt has his, so we're going to go to Matt, so everybody else can think of theirs. Go. Okay. Uh, don't forget the sense of play. Um, it's easy to get, oh, is this a lightning round? Yeah, just enjoy your damn selves. Um, have fun with animation. D don't forget what you did as a kid that got you into it. Yeah, and uh, be okay to fail. Failing's okay because you learn from that. To fail and keep going, experiment with stuff. Um, I guess, yeah, kind of piggybacking on that too. Just remember why you're here. Just, that's it. Uh, past self, don't make fun of Ian. He does text at you, and he is probably watching this. <laughs> Uh, I, I think for me, just take care of yourself. Get up, uh, get water, eat when you're working. If you're going to work long hours sometimes. Just remember that you don't, like, 12 hours in the seat is not 12 productive hours. You can get up and go walk around during that time and, and, and just, like, do basic, like, you know, human functions. The end. All right. So I think that's a wrap. Thank you guys for uh, being on the panel and giving us all your amazing advice. Thank you out there for watching. And uh, I don't remember what's coming up next. I believe there's an interview. And then there's... Who's the other talk? Is it, I believe Simon and Lana are up next with, uh, they're going to yell at me what the name of their talk is, Simon and Lana. 
what uh, the schools are not teaching you. It's a great presentation. Is that close? Is that good? He's looking right at me. And he's, they're Canadian, so I don't know. All right, thank you. Bye, Bye. guys.